In this tutorial, we are going to learn about Plasmid PUC7. Well, PUC stands for Plasmid University, California. This Plasmid PUC7 is a derivative of PBR322, which means that PUC7 is a modified version of PBR322. The size of this plasmid is much smaller, which is about 2.7 kb. It has all the essential parts as PBR322 had, that is an ampicillin resistant gene and a coal E1 gene for the origin of replication. Here, the te uh, tetracycline resistant gene is not present. Instead of that, there is a second marker due to the E. coli gene that is lac Z alpha encoding the alpha fragment of the beta galactosidase. And this enzyme hydrolyzes galactose. Now, let me tell you that uh, minimum two markers help in the easy selection and identification of the recombinant vectors as one of the markers may be used for inserting our desired DNA segment and the other one may be used to identify the recombinant ones. As we used, for example, the ampicillin resistant gene for DNA insert and tetracycline resistant gene for the identification of the recombinants or vice versa in PBR322 in the earlier video. So in this case of PUC7, we have two markers. The first one is ampicillin resistant gene and the second one is lac Z alpha gene. Now, what we do is that we take E. coli strains, E. coli strains uh, like JM103 and JM109 or the related ones as host in which the lac Z alpha gene, lac Z alpha gene has been deleted. So we take E. coli strains such as GM103 and GM109 in which the lac Z alpha gene has been deleted from the lac operon. So whenever PUC vector enters such an E. coli cell, for example, let's see, this is the E. coli cell and uh, this is our PUC vector. This is PUC and this is E. coli. This, uh, this host that is E. coli, it is deficient in the lac Z alpha gene while this PUC vector have that. So when this vector will enter into this E. coli, this E. coli will use this lac Z alpha gene and its own machinery for the other subunits of the uh, beta galactosidase enzyme. They both will combine and work together to form the active enzyme beta galactosidase so whenever when our puc vector enters such an e coli cells that is deficient in the lac z alpha gene the uh, they both will work together and encode the different parts of the beta galactosidase enzyme both will work together and encode for different parts of the beta galactosidase enzyme so this active enzyme so formed enables these cells to hydrolyze galactose. To check this, that is to screen this, what we do is that we use a medium containing X-gal. X-gal is also called 5-bromo-4-chloro-3-indoyl-beta-D-galactose. So what we do is we use a medium which contains X-gal. Now beta-galactosidase hydrolyzes this X-gal to yield a blue dye. So what happens is when uh, uh, we place our cells in this X-gal containing medium, the beta galactoside, if present in the cells, will hydrolyze it and produce blue colored 
die. So if the blue colored dye or the blue colored canonies are obtained, this means that the E. coli cells have been transformed with the PUC vector. Now there is a polylinker sequence located within the LACZ alpha which provides several unique restriction sites for the DNA insertion. This polylinker sequence itself does not interfere with the LACZ alpha expression but when a DNA insert is placed within it, the LACZ alpha expression is prevented. So this means that if we insert, inserted our DNA fragment into the PUC vectors LACZ alpha polylinker region which have various restriction sites, then the LACZ alpha gene of this PUC vector will become inactivated. So if we place our recombinant cells in which we have inserted our DNA into the polylinker region of the LACZ alpha sequence of the PUC vector, then this X gal will produce white colonies. Which means that if we placed our recombinant cells on the X gal medium, white colored colonies will be obtained. Let's summarize this once again. This is an E. coli cell lacking this LACZ alpha encoding gene and uh, this gene is present in this PUC vector and in this LACZ alpha encoding gene of PUC vector there is a polylinker region which contains several unique sites for restriction enzymes in which we can insert our DNA. So when we placed our cells on the exgal containing medium, if blue colored colonies are obtained, it means that the lag Z gene, the lag Z alpha gene is intact and hence PUC machinery and the E. coli genome machinery together are synthesizing different subunits of the enzyme beta galactosidase and hence the exgal is hydrolyzed by this enzyme to yield blue colored colonies. And on the other hand, if the white colored colonies are obtained, it means that the laxid gene, the laxid alpha gene of the PUC vector is now non-functional due to our DNA insert and hence the active galactoside, uh, the active beta galactosidase is not formed and X-gal is not hydrolyzed. So for the screening, what we do is very simple. It is that we first grow the cells, the E. coli cells on the ampicillin containing medium. It will eliminate the cells which have not obtained the PUC vector. Either uh, it's like that alpha gene is intact or not, that is a different thing. But the non-transformed cells, which means that the PUC vector has not entered into the cell, those cells are called non-transformed cells and they have been eliminated when we uh, had put these E. coli cells on the ampicillin medium and then the colonies so obtained are replica plated on X-gal containing medium and the white colonies are selected as they contain the recombinant vector.